I do destroy city scene? Take one! Hopefully the only take, because building this model city was a pain. Yeah, oh, yeah. right. Action! Dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Me like destroy! Well, there goes all the money I earned over the past two weeks. Guys, what are we gonna do? Both the camera and the city have basically been turned into dust. Well, the dust is still here. We could try putting it back together. We know what it looked like before and we know what we have. Kid, just because we have the parts and we know what the end result is, that doesn't mean we can just put it back together. In fact, it's practically impossible to put it back together. This reminds me of an SO Lang called Burn! Roll the rest of the video, this sketch was abysmal. So, take this Python program. If you take the output of this program and compare it to what you wrote, you can easily make an educated guess that print takes the word in parentheses and outputs it to the console. Python was designed in a way where the code can be easily understood, even by people that may not know that much Python. But what if the programming language was designed not to be understandable at a glance? For example, brain f code looks like a random string of brackets, pluses, and minuses. This code, by the way, does the exact same thing as the Python example, but unlike the Python example, it's impossible to know how it works without knowing how the programming language works as a whole. The fact is, esoteric programming languages like brain f are hard to understand if you're not told how they work. And usually, you are told how they work, either from the Esolang's wiki, or from a manual in the 70s written by two people who were likely high. Burn is an Esolang that was written by someone called AIS523. He is known for writing a bunch of Esolangs, such as Underload. The weird thing about Burn, though, is that there's literally no information out about it. The only information known about Burn is this program, and a few notes in the discussion page. Everything else does not exist, and the reason for that is because, apparently, AIS-523 forgot all the details. So the goal, I guess, of Burn is to figure out how this SOLang works and reconstruct it into a working programming language again. And if you want to see how long it's been around, the Burn SOLangs.org page was made in 2008. I was in kindergarten back then! And the page has remained mostly unchanged since 2008, with the only additions being page categories, and a note saying, This article is too short, please elongate it! Because we can expand this article based on the sheer amounts of nothing to go off of. And by the way, in case you were wondering, no, I have not figured out how burn works. I just think that it's interesting how we have an esoling that so obviously exists, but nobody really knows how to use it. It would be like finding a book written in a script that nobody has ever used except for in that book. Oh wait, that exists. The Burn wiki page has one program, and it's the only program that apparently was ever written in it. So, what does this one program do anyway? That at least might be helpful to know. This program is an interpreter for the Rule 110 Cellular Automation. Rule of the Internet 110. If your statement is preceded by, HEY GUYS! then you're probably doing something wrong! Hey God! So, Rule 110 is a type of cellular automation that starts at the top line and works downward. For each cell in each row, it checks what the three cells above it are. If the three cells above the cell being looked at are any of these patterns, then that cell is marked as filled. Otherwise, that cell is marked as empty. If you start with a single dot at the top, Rule 110 will generate a big triangle with a bunch of triangle-shaped holes. Well, that's neat, I guess, but how do you know that it's not just doing a single row of Rule 110, like that marble interpreter? Hey, Idex, look at the discussion tab on the Esselang wiki. It's blue. That means that people have talked about it, and that includes AIS-523. He says that the program tiled an infinite plane, which strongly implies that it is using the two-dimensional version of Rule 110, not just doing a single row. He also calls this the initial state, which implies that burn programs are written in an infinitely sized grid of two character cells. According to this program's singular comment, there are colors in this SLing at levels 0 to 3. Now, this is AIS-523's only SLing to include color, so I have no references to go off of when it comes to color but that means that I can assume one of the digits must be a color. And there is no way to know which digit it is for certain, because both digits have numbers ranging from 0 to 3. Why must it be so inconvenient like this? 
But anyway, if you have black be 0 and 3 be white and 1 and 2 be shades of grey, the first digit looks like this and the second digit looks like this. This isn't very helpful, but it's cool nonetheless. The fact of the matter is, reconstructing a language from nothing is hard. For example, take this string of text. This was written a long time ago in a language that has been discovered very recently. Specifically, it was discovered a whole 30 seconds ago. Nobody knows anything about it. But now, IDEX over here will try to translate it. That's a false equivalence. Burn gave us the answer, and it just wants us to know how it got to that answer. It doesn't want us to guess what it means without any context. We know it's a Rule 110 interpreter. That makes sense. The people that discovered this language, though, just now at this very second, discovered the English translation was written right next to it. The translation is, the dog barks. That's underwhelming. But anyway, tell me how this language turns this sequence of characters into the meaning, the dog barks. Hmm, gosh, now I see your point. But I think this part means the, this part means dog, and this part means barks. Wow, dude, you're very wrong. The verb comes first, so it's barks, then the, then dog. Well, you're both wrong! The language does not have a definite article. Furthermore, the word dog is this, and this part means whatever the subject is most likely to do. What? There's no way that forms naturally! And that's another issue with a burn. A pretty major issue. You see, they all came up with ways that worked. All of their interpretations of this sentence took this string of gobbledygook as input, and led to this sentence as output. But, at most, only one of them can be correct, and the other two just invented brand new conlangs that share a sentence with this language. So let's bring that back to burn. If you found a specification of burn that reads as rule 110, specification A, Carl could come around and say, YOUR SPECIFICATION SUCKS! My specification, specification B, is better, and it also reads this program as rule 110, so you can't say it's wrong! Now, which one of these specifications would be burn? And which one would be a newly invented Esselang that happens to share a program with burn? There is no way to know, and so arguing ensues forever. Unless one of these manages to make a light bulb go off in AIS 523's head. An 11 year old swirly fluorescent light bulb from 2008, but a light bulb nonetheless. By the way, and yes, I know that it's a silly idea, but it's plausible to believe that burn is just a programming language that simply checks if the program is this specific string of numbers, and if it is, it outputs a rule 110 interpreter, and anything else is just an error. The best part is, unless burn's figured out, there's no way to prove that that's incorrect. In fact, that's the only definition of burn right now that works. But assuming that burn is a real programming language and not that stupid specification I just made up, it's probably a very low-level Turing Tarpid SLang. The reason I assume that is because it seems to be AIS 523's favorite type of SLang to create. I mean, if you select any of his SLangs at random from his user page, there's a good chance it will have Turing Tarpid as a category. Hold on, what does Turing Tarpid actually mean? I'm glad you asked, but to know what a Turing Tarpid is, you must know what Turing Complete means. A Turing complete programming language is one where any computation that can be performed on an infinitely large Turing machine can be performed in the programming language. Turing tarpits, meanwhile, are Turing complete SLANGs that make it really difficult to perform those calculations. But not impossible. Examples of Turing tarpits are brain <laughs> slashes and possibly malbulge unshackled. No one's really been able to check on that one. But how do you know it's Turing complete? The wiki page says it has an unknown computational class. And yes, it says that, but rule 110 is Turing complete. So if burn lets you change whatever the default arrangements of blocks in rule 110 is, then it's Turing complete. That means that my specification is not Turing complete, but that's also because my specification is completely stupid. But anyway, I don't think we'll be seeing a seriously remade burn anytime soon. Even AIS 523 himself says his SLANGs would be almost impossible to reconstruct. But if any of you are up to the challenge, then maybe we will see a remade burn. I don't know. But still, Burn is interesting because we have the code for it and we know what it does, but we still know pretty much nothing about it. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time! Hopefully for a programming language that actually exists.